Apostle Paul now turns his attention to give an indictment to jot the readers to self-examination, more specifically, those who pass judgment against another. The Gentiles were guilty of the gross sins that were pronounced against them. You remember the story of Job? Right? The story of Job has 42 chapters. And in that 42 chapters, the first two chapters uh, speak of how he became uh, plagued with all the affliction that came upon him. Uh, he lost his ten children, he lost his house, he lost his, all his goods, he lost his cattle. Uh, his wife says to him, curse God and die. And that was at the end of chapter 2. And he says, no, I will maintain my ways before God, even uh, during the time of this affliction, when he has lost everything, he was willing to. And then <coughs> you see from Job chapter 3 onwards, uh, all the way to the almost the end, the last chapter, uh, there were four men who came into his life, and they began to torment him by telling him that, Job, because you have sinned against God, that is why uh, you, 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 are, you are in this kind of situation. But we all know, because in chapter 1, uh, uh, we were given a preview of what happened in heaven. Right? Satan came to the Lord and said that he wants to try, that means he wants to test Job. And Job didn't know that God is testing him. Job didn't know that God is testing his faith. It's not that he has sinned against God, that God afflicted him. But because God knew that this is a man of integrity, he is a man who fear God and eschew evil, a man who fear God and hate evil, a righteous man, a good man. Every day he will wake up early to pray for all his children. And he loved God, and he served God with the time in his life. But when all this affliction came to him, he faced the greatest incarceration from his friends. His friends came and, you know, there were three conversations by each of the three persons and his reply to them. He says, no, no, no. They say, it's because you have sinned against God. That's why God is doing this to you. You naughty fella. Ah, you must have done wrong, you see. That's why you are tried. Uh, let us be not so quick right, to pass a judgment upon someone to say that, you know, you are in this predicament because of this or because of that. Yeah. Have we not been guilty? Well, uh, let us say that we have been guilty, and we must not, we must not, we, we must not uh, uh, make judgments like that. And God be merciful to us. We don't know why a person is tried by God in this way. And so the Lord tells us, that the Gentiles were guilty of the gross sins that were pronounced against them, and they were without excuse. So this man refers to whosoever that judges. Uh, he, he who points a finger at others, is he not himself guilty? Right? God is perfectly just in his assessment of the plight of fallen men. So God rightly judged the sinners that they are guilty, that they are guilty. And uh, he judges in truth, he judges without partiality, and he jots us to look into our lives. And indeed, we need to realize that we are guilty. Uh, there is none righteous. There is none righteous. When men sin against God and is unrepentant, and is just waiting, a sure judgment, from an all-seeing God, all-knowing God, all-powerful God. And 
so if you are in some trial, well, the Lord asks that you hang on there and be strong. God will see you through. You see, the trials that a believer experiences in life right, is only for a period of time. There is a beginning, there's an end. And in that period, we need to hang on there, keep praying, keep trusting the Lord, keep faith, right? because God will surely make a way. And we need to trust Him. And that is a time when we exercise faith. How can we exercise faith when, you know, everything is smooth sailing? Everything is going well. God sends us trials so that we can draw ourselves closer to Him. Right? You, you never say, I, I, I never commune with God in this way. I've never pleaded with God in this way. I've never do these things. I've never dr been drawn so close to God because of my need. Indeed, God sent trials into our lives to cause us to seek Him. And that is a, a good trial, right? Because we are drawn closer to God. And what do we do when we, what happens when we draw, are drawn closer to God? We experience the glory of God. We see God manifesting His power see God manifesting His presence in our lives. So, God gives to us, Jesus tells us, the Christian disposition is one who has a poverty of spirit, one who mourns for his sins. And this is the beginning of salvation grace, when we are willing to humble ourselves and to repent of our sins and come to Jesus Christ for cleansing. There is only one way men can have their sins forgiven, in the blood of the Lamb, in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And the Bible describes, we said Job, eh, as that perfect and upright man. But at the end of his trial, eh, he was asked still, you know, to pray for his friends who tormented him, the mad friends who judged him, caused him so much misery. God wants them to be forgiven. And so God asked Job to pray for them. How can he pray for his so-called tormentors? Right? If somebody is tom has tormented you, how can you pray for them? Well, he had to pray for them before God would bless him, restore him. And God restored him with double of everything that he lost. Right? He lost the camels. God gave him double. He lost the sheep. God gave him double. He lost the children. Well, God also gave him double because he didn't lose the ten children. They are in heaven. God gave him ten more. Double. So everything that he had doubled because he maintained his way with the Lord. God was with him and he was willing to trust God during this time. Well, he was a man who is willing to make right with God all the time. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. And so God wants us to confess our sins. Then we find forgiveness. May the Lord lead us to come to Him in self-examination and find healing with God. So, here we said, our second thought, uh, repent before it's too late. Verse 4, All despises thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Sometimes, God, you know, didn't chastise us in any way. But it's long-suffering. Still we are enjoying the goodness of God. In spite and despite of all our shortcomings. God is long-suffering. Ah, God is good to allow time for sinners to repent of their sins by delaying His judgment. And if you look at the, the life of the people of Israel, God is always very, very <coughs> kind.
very long suffering. You know, when he judged Pharaoh, uh, he began with a, we say, a kachambute plague, right? Uh, a plague that is uh, 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 such a, you know, minor thing. Uh, even the magicians of, of, uh, of uh, Egypt <coughs> could, uh, could, uh, yeah, could do these miracles. But when they were unrepentant, uh, when they continue to harden their hearts, wow, then the hard one comes. And finally, uh, the one that caused them to just uh, break down the death of all the firstborn in Egypt. Firstborn of men, firstborn of cattle. Wow, that one caused them to be totally defeated. They cannot resist God. And God warns us uh, slowly, you know, he, he tells us uh, we don't listen. He comes again, we don't listen. We don't come again, those we don't listen. And so in the book of Proverbs it says, uh, your destruction will come as a whirlwind, suddenly, swiftly. It comes and that's it. And so the Lord wants us to be aware. Uh, repent before it's too late. The long suffering of God uh, there's a limit, you know. After nine plagues, the tenth plague will have to come. When a man sins without restraint and thinks that he can get away with sin time and time again, he is hereby warned. Judgment will surely come. And God has withheld judgment so that he may have the opportunity to be awakened of his grave danger and quickly repent. And so, you know, if we are not, if we have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, then today is a day of salvation. And if we have not served the Lord and obey His commandment, well, now is the time to obey Him. Uh, do not wait. Do not wait. Jonathan in his sermon, Jonathan Edwards in his sermon. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Right? He described the pre precarious state of men in rebellion against God. And he painted the picture of one who is held by a tiny thread. He draws to a picture of someone held by a tiny thread. And below is a fire. Cauldron of burning fire awaiting to devour him in judgment. Jesus described the rich man, uh, the certain rich man in Luke 16, 19, who died without Christ and found his soul in the torments of hellfire. And he was in utter regret. Uh, Mr. Chan, uh, the man who went home with the Lord about 35 weeks ago. Well, there was one time he went for a holiday and they were all in Disneyland in, in Disneyland in Tokyo and that day there was an earthquake and you know when the earthquake came well, they spent the night on the floor in the restaurant and after they went back to Tokyo the quake continued and they were told to stay indoors so that was the holiday and during that time, well, he had a frightening dream. He dreamt of hell. He dreamt of hell. And hell fire. And he was frightened. And we all know that earthquake is a sign of God's judgment. Our Lord says before his return, the earthquakes will become more and more frequent a sign of a coming judgment of God. And so it's no wonder that four days before the Lord took him home, God had already prepared his heart. He realized that he's in a precarious state. He must believe. He must come to him. And so in the last four days of his life, he received the Lord. On Monday, we saw him. 
On Wednesday, we confirmed his faith. Thursday, he was supposed to be discharged. But the Lord took him home on Thursday morning. Too late. But it's not too late for him because he has sought the Lord. So at that time when he was repenting, you know how tough it is? Because the cancer in the stomach is really causing him to have great pain. And it came suddenly. Uh, he was well. Uh, the week before, he was still well, nothing, no sign. But when he went into the hospital, the pain came and became so acute. So that within a short time, his life was taken from him. And so when he had to respond to us, when we were speaking and sharing the gospel with him, he was lying in his sick bed in the hospital and in pain. So certain time when we were speaking, and our brother remembers, he says, wait, wait. So he closed his eyes as if to ask for relief before we continue again. And he knew that it is a very difficult time. But he repented before it's too late. And the Lord wants us to repent before it's too late. Do not treat with scornful contempt God's delay in judging our sin, our habitual sin. Do not delay. Do not treat with contempt that God is not judging us after our sin. It is not an it is not an impetus to sin, but rather a time for soul searching that it may lead us to repentance. So these are very hard statements that the Apostle Paul is speaking to us. But after, verse 5 says, after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment May God help us to repent of any known sin in our lives before it's too late. And when we come before God to confess our sins, we will receive forgiveness. The John Soon Chorus. Very wonderful. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus sets me free. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. Christ has set me Fellowship Hall, and we were told Mr. Chan has gone home to be with the Lord. But his dear wife has come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, she was baptized. And now, the helper, we are preparing the helper for baptism. And Mrs. Chan said to the helper, Quickly be baptized. Or else you will regret. So the brother at the fellowship hall table says, how could she say those words? She must have understood the value, the importance of it. To obey Christ's command before it's too late. And so we thank God. We thank God that uh, God saved two souls. Two souls. One in the nick, just at the last minute. Indeed, Jesus is able to break every fetter. Jesus is able to save us, you know, cause a change in our hearts. And after you are saved, uh, what will you do? Wow, you will sing hallelujah, right? So happy. You have been freed from your bondage of sin. You are going to heaven. You are not going to die in your sins. Our impartial judge, verse 6 to 11. Who shall, 
who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patience, continuance in well-doing for glory and honor, in immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish shall come upon the soul that doeth evil. Of the Jew first and also to the Gentile, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Our God is an impartial judge. He is infinite, eternal, unchangeable in his justice, and he judges fairly and correctly. There is no misjudgment with God. You know, if you think that there is some injustice in your life that will that has not been rectified, well, the Bible tells us that our God knows every injustice that is going on in your life. And he will help you. He will make right. And you can trust him to give a impartial, fair judgment for you. He render to every man according to his deeds. We cannot escape the all-seeing eyes of God. Who will live in righteousness? Who who all who will live in righteousness will receive from him a righteous man's reward. All who will live an evil life, obey not the truth, will receive God's judgment, tribulation and anguish. Let us not fight with God. We won't win. Cannot win. We will suffer. There is no battle there. So Solomon understood this truth and at the close of his life he acknowledged that man has to give account for all his actions before God at the day of judgment. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, God says, fear Him and obey His commandments. This is the whole of man. Now, the word duty is in the italics, added in by the translator to give us the, the sense. But basically, fear God and obey His commandments is the whole summary of what we are to do. That's the, our our mission statement, you know. Life's mission statement. For what it says here, God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the Apostle Paul illustrated this truth clearly concerning how God would judge the believer when he said in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, according to the grace of God, which has given unto me as a wise Master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth. For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man laid a, built upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If a man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If a man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he shall be saved, he himself shall be saved, as yet by fire. So he's speaking to believers. What you do now, you will receive your reward in heaven. And your reward that will come in heaven depends on how you would use your time. And we all are given 24 hours. And the Lord wants us to use our time wisely. Sometimes God gives us pocket of time whereby <coughs> we have time. Then we have to ask ourselves, Lord, what do you want me to do with the time that I have? How 
can I use this time wisely, profitably for you? Now that you have given me this time, you know, let us ask the Lord. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Our lost condition before God. Romans 2, 12 to 13. For as many have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. But as many have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, this is the first time uh, the law, the word law, the law of God is introduced here in this book. Okay? Now, God's law may be summarized by the Ten Commandments as given by God to Moses at Mount Sinai. And it includes all the instructions in the Torah. Uh, the word Torah means the law. Uh, the first five books of the Old Testament written by Moses. And it may be broadly defined as all of God's instruction to men. Uh, God's, the Bible itself. God's law is the standard by which God uses to judge men. So if you know the word of God, you know what's coming your way. It's as if you have a crystal ball, you know. You know what is coming your way. You see, with the people of God, God doesn't leave us uh, not knowing what the future is. God always tells us, we know. And here, Paul says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. For Example, the fifth commandment says, Honor thy father and thy mother. When we dishonor our parents, whether by word or thought or deed, we fail to keep the law. And sin is simply failing to obey God's law. Hence, by the knowledge of the law, we are able to see how God, the only just judge, would assess us. So God's law tells us what is right and wrong. So the way we live our life is so clearly given to us. Right? What Paul is saying is that even though a person may not know God's law, he is nevertheless judged by it. Even if he transgressed God's law unknowingly, he is guilty. So someone would ask, if a person does not know Jesus Christ, will he go to heaven? Well, the answer is no. If he does not know God, the way to God through Jesus Christ, will he go to heaven? The answer is no. A man sinned against God, he may not know the Ten Commandments. But you realize that God put his, his moral laws in our heart. Our conscience, you see, because we are made in the image of God. Although that conscience may be marred, but there is a conscience that God places inside, a moral factor that he places inside us to help us to know. You see. And so, we are still culpable. And so, only the doers of the law would find favor in the sight of God. Only the doers of the law. So God says, honor thy father and thy mother. God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Very clear. And we are to practice it. Only the doers of the law, doers, would find favor in the sight of God. And so what, what did the prophet Isaiah uh, promise those? who uh, keep the Sabbath day holy. The prophet Isaiah promised, he says, that you would write in high places. The Lord will bless you. And therefore, he leads us to see our lost condition. And the hearer who has a hate knowledge of the truth, but is not convicted to obey uh, will face God's judgment. So, it's easy to say that, you know, I want to do that, I want to do that, and do that. But to do is another thing. And we oftentimes find ourselves very weak. We are weak. And we realize we are weak. And oftentimes we struggle. And it takes time for us to grow. And we must be, in a sense, sometimes uh, say we must be patient with ourselves. 
we don't get discouraged. We say, oh, yeah, I, I think I should have done that, you know, but yet I didn't do that. We must not get discouraged, but rather we, you know, we need to pick ourselves up and say that, yeah, Lord, I realize that I have been weak, but help me to be stronger. Help me to honor thee better next time. God always gives us a, 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 a way out, a second chance. So the Lord wants us to, 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 you know, do it then. May the Lord help us where we have failed. May we come to the Lord to confess our sins and find forgiveness with Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy grace. Thy mercy, thy peace, is passes all understanding that comes to our hearts when we seek thee. Lord, uh, may thy peace abound in each and every of our hearts. And Lord, send us forth uh, this new week to be thy messenger. And Lord, bring us back again next Lord's Day to continue our study that we may know thee in a deeper way in a surer way that our lives will be transformed that there would be indeed be a change this i pray with thanksgiving in jesus name amen, amen.